In this video, we'll walk through how you can manage every aspect of your training data preparation, model configuration, and model error analysis in one platform. Learn how you can improve your models with data versioning, experiment management, model training integration, and model evaluation and testing. In this scenario, we're going to use our model to find labeling errors. We'll look at where our model predictions and labels disagree and focus on high confidence predictions. So in this case, I'm looking for something with one or more false positives, and I'm sorting it by confidence score descending. In this example, you can see a high confidence prediction without an annotation. That's a labeling mistake. And if I look through these data rows, there are more examples of where a labeler has either missed or mislabeled examples of people. I can select the data rows that need correction and send them directly to a labeling project. I can select a project, name my batch, and determine it as a high priority. In this case, I can also include those model predictions to use as pre-labels to speed up the labeling process. Next, we're going to compare labels to model predictions to find errors made by our model. If I look at the metrics tab, I can look at a class with a low F1 score, in this case, apples. Labelbox will sort it by increasing F1 score to see where my model is struggling the most. Looking at this example, I can see that my model has incorrectly predicted this bin of oranges to be apples. If I look at another example, we can see that this apple is correctly predicted and labeled, but these grapes are also predicted to be apples, which is clearly incorrect. So this is another example of model errors showing up in my data. Now, how can I fix these model errors? You can easily find unlabeled images that are similar to these model errors and label them, and then retrain the model on this additional data. To do so, I can select these data rows that have model errors and view them in catalog. From there, I can use catalog and model embeddings to find similar data. Similarity Search will use embeddings to find other examples of unlabeled data that has apples. And from there, we can send this data directly to a project for labeling to retrain our model and improve its understanding of apples. In this third workflow, we're going to show you how to use model predictions to help you curate high value data for labeling. That's active learning, deciding what to label next among all my unlabeled data. So here's a collection of unlabeled data. All we have in this data are model predictions. I'll sort these data rows by confidence from low to high to see where my model is uncertain. If I add a filter to look at only predictions with TVs, for example, I can narrow the search a little bit. Here's an example where you can see a laptop prediction that is accurate, but then two inaccurate TV predictions. In a fairly different example, here is an image that has three framed photos in the background that the model thinks are TVs due to the frames. The model is not confident on these predictions, and that's how we surface them. This is a high impact data row. The frames on the wall really do look like TVs, so the model is understandably confused we would definitely want to label this image in priority because it would help teach our model to stop confusing TVs and frames. So in just a few clicks, I found high impact data rows that would have taken me hours to identify otherwise. Here's one more image where my model is low confident. It's identified two monitors, an iPod dock, and a laptop, all as TVs. So we can select this data, unlabel data with poor predictions, and send them to a labeling project. Since these three examples are high impact images on which our model is understandably not confident on, we definitely want to label in priority so that we can retrain our model on this additional data. So we can add this batch to a project and label it uncertain data with a high priority. We can also choose to include those model predictions that the labeler can then easily correct. You can also auto label data using our model projector. I can use our projector view to identify interesting clusters or data points and view them in catalog. Once in catalog, I can apply metadata to these data rows to make finding and searching data rows easier than ever across catalog, annotate, and model. Once you upload your model predictions, Labelbox is a great place to diagnose how your model is performing. 
You can visually compare your model predictions and ground truth to see where they agree and disagree, but also view the performance metrics that Labelbox computes, such as precision, recall, F1, and false positives for every class. And you can also upload your own custom metrics. You can narrow in on a subset of data where your model might be struggling, for instance, low precision parts, and it will automatically surface the corresponding data rows. You can also narrow in on a subset of data to see how your model is doing quantitatively and qualitatively. These metrics will automatically update to reflect the performance of my model on that subset of data. So I can create and save a slice of data and share that with my team by creating a slice in Labelbox. This way, you can understand and share your model performance on a specific slice of data for greater insight. Another crucial aspect of your data engine is being able to see how different models compare to each other. Labelbox lets you see how your predictions on both models compare. So here I can compare how these two models have predicted a person in the image, and can notice that they differ in how tightly the bounding box is predicted around the person. Again, I could narrow in on a subset of data to visually inspect and understand the difference between two models. You can further understand what's causing the differences by comparing the model run configurations and seeing the differences in hyperparameters between these two models. Before deploying your model in production, it's crucial to decide which confidence threshold you want to use. It'll determine the trade-off between false positives and false negatives, between precision and recall. In Labelbox, you can see how your metrics, such as precision, recall, or F1 score, evolve as you change the confidence threshold of your model. Similarly, you can see how the number of false positives and negatives change as your confidence threshold changes. This is a powerful way of tuning your confidence threshold for your model for every class, and you can do this directly in our UI. All of this is made possible by being able to create and version data splits with the model tool. So here's an example of creating a new model. First, you select the ontology. All data rows containing the annotations within the selected ontology in your entire catalog will be pulled in unless you specify a dataset or project to pull from. With your model created, you're now ready to create your first model run. If you have previous model runs, you can load data splits from your previous runs for consistency. Otherwise, you can also set your specific data splits for train, validate, and test. Here, you can see all the data rows in the train, validate, and test data splits, and you can also easily move them in between test sets. You can also edit the model run hyperparameters in this view and version it. When you're ready to train your model, we support model training where you can either kick off model training jobs through a low-code integration between Labelbox and your model training services, or you can send your data rows and model hyperparameters to your custom model environment.